When Esau Edom reigns, the earth groans as it waits for the sons of the Most High to take their rightful place. We have been tracing the sons of Esau Edom, but I will have you know that they know who they are, and they know that their time is short. The reign of Esau Edom is quickly coming to an end, and they know it. In this session, we will take a look at their plan to maintain their dominance in the world. What's their strategy? Let's talk about it on today's session. The descendants of Esau are fully aware that the children of Israel are waking up. They know that we are the people of the book. I am convinced of this. I'm going to share some information with you today that will reveal the mindset of the ruling class. This article is from U.S. News. It identifies the ruling nations. It says these countries project their influence on the world stage. The United States and Russia had this list. So the world's most powerful countries also are the ones that consistently dominate news headlines, preoccupy policymakers, and shape global economic patterns. Their foreign policies and military budgets are tracked religiously. So we have a list of the top 10. Let's take a look at them. So they are listed based on their power ranking. These are all European nations or nations propped up by Europeans. And you can see the United States is in the first place. Um, it's number one. Uh, Russia is second, followed by China. Germany is number four, then the United Kingdom. France, Japan, Israel is number eight. Then we have South Korea and Saudi Arabia is number 10. So here is the question these nations are asking. With the end of four centuries of Western dominance, what will the world order be in the 21st century? So this is coming from the Brookings Institute. If you don't know who they are, they conduct research and education in the social sciences, particularly in economics, government, and foreign policy. They are one of the most influential think tanks in the United States. So is it a coincidence that they are asking this question especially after we're now ending the recognized 400 years of the true sons of Israel being in this land? Do you think they know about these prophecies and the implications? Of course they do. I want to share some excerpts from a letter from one of the Brookings experts um, in one of their meetings. He says, Mr. Chancellor, dear colleagues and friends, it is an honor for me to open this year dedicated to the external action of France, attempting to answer an essential question for you. With the end of four centuries of Western dominance, what will the world order be in the 21st century? So they know that Western dominance is coming to an end. He says, I will attempt it by discussing three questions successful, successively. Where do we come from? Where are we going? And finally, what should we do? He goes on to say, there is another question that I will not discuss today, but which has always fascinated me. How do we explain that the people of this small cape of the Asian continent, that is Europe, have been able to impose their dominance, military, economic, intellectual, and legal on the whole world for so long. 
He goes on to say, without answering this question, I will confine myself to a brief reminder. Where do we come from? Western dominance began in the 16th and 17th centuries, the centuries of the great discoveries of Spain and Portugal. And you know what happened during those periods. We just talked about that, how Spain uh, and Portugal was very influential in the slave trade, in weaponry, and shipbuilding. He says, Western dominance continued with the 18th century, which can arguably be described as the century of France. Then the 19th, which was undoubtedly that of the United Kingdom, and finally the 20th century, when the United States took the baton from Europe to affirm our Western values. He says, so I come to my second question, where are we going? After four decades of bipolar order, after a decade of unipolar Western order, we are today living in a multipolar world where the world's where the rules of the game are contested. This evolution has been accelerated by the United States itself during the eight years of President Obama's administration. So what does he mean by this? He, has, he is saying that when President Obama um, came into power, he's saying in the middle paragraph that his presidency illustrated a willingness to no longer be the only policeman in the world and to play collectively. So I'll drop down to the last part. He says the election of President Trump in November 2016 will dramatically accelerate this de-westernization of the world order. So let's look at what he says the solution is. He says, I come to my third question, what should we do? He says, my first recommendation is not to despair of the United States. In the face of the current movements whose deep roots I have described, other forces exist throughout the country, forces already at work that pursue an America that fully assumes its responsibilities in preserving a world order based on the rule of law and, get this, our values. <laughs> he says, um, let me drop down, while pursuing a dialogue without excessive illusions given, those currently in power must share their vision and ambitions with the many American officials who tomorrow or the day after tomorrow could be in charge of the destiny of the United States. So I wonder who those people are. All right, don't miss this part. He says, I will only say that there is no sustainable solution that does not include a significant strengthening of our means of control. Let me restate that. There is no sustainable solution that does not include a significant strengthening of our means of control, including through military means. <laughs> All right, I'll drop down. It says, um, this Europe a Europe which protects, but which is also an economic power of the 21st century, can it not bring together Europeans around a shared vision and ambition? So they're not even in thinking about <laughs> the non-European countries. This plan is focused on Western dominance, hence the title, Western dominance dominance. All right, let's keep going and see what else they have in mind. This article also comes from the Brookings Institute. It says, whoever leads an artificial 
intelligence in 2030 will rule the world until 2100. So see, in the past, they dominated with their weaponry. Now they want to dominate using artificial intelligence. This is Satan's counter defense for the power of the Holy Spirit. So see, Satan knows that when the people of Yah operate fully in the gifts of the Spirit, he can't overcome us. So he tries to counter that power by using sorcery and artificial intelligence. It's artificial. So it, that's an imitation of the real thing. But in order for these gifts to manifest fully, we need to flow in the fruit of the Spirit, which is why he tries so hard to keep us divided and in strife with one another. Let's keep going. This article comes from the Pew Research Center. It says, Artificial Intelligence and the Future of Humans. Experts say the rise of artificial intelligence will make most people better off over the next decade. But many have concerns about how advances in AI will affect what it means to be human, to be productive, and to exercise free will. So in case you haven't been tuning in, the end game is also to create hybrid beings. The gene slicing and mixing of DNA where they can inject humans with the DNA of animals and vice versa is exactly what the Egyptians were doing. Who taught them that? It was the knowledge they got from the fallen angels. This is the mystery of these secret societies. They now have the knowledge of the ancient Egyptians, and as a result of technology, they can edit DNA, and they're using artificial intelligence as a way to control humans. CRISPR technology is a tool for editing genes. Look it up. It's spelled C-R-I-S-P-R, and see what they're able to do with it. You may have heard about the uh, treatment that President Trump received. So this is coming from the Science Magazine. What is the antibody cocktail Trump received? So it says it's a combination of two antibodies directed against a key protein of the virus that causes COVID-19 SARS-CoV-2. They bind to a region on the main surface spike protein that helps the virus attach to a receptor on human cells called Anglotension converting enzyme 2. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that right. But the targeted region is, dumbed, is dubbed the receptor binding domain. One antibody comes from a human who had recovered from a SARS CoV 2 infection. A B cell that makes the antibody was harvested from the person's blood and the genes for the immune protein isolated and copy. Now listen to this. The other antibody is from a mouse, which was engineered to have a human immune system. <laughs> hmm, it's getting stranger and stranger, folks. This is another one that you want to look up. <laughs> I can't include too much of it here. And I think you know why, but this says biotechnological biotechno advances in luciferase enzyme. So look, you all, why would they call it this? Why? <laughs> Let's keep going. So let's take a look at this article from the Max Planck Institute. And whenever you see Lucy, Lucent, pay attention to that. So this says Lucy, a near-infrared camera and spectrograph for the LBT. What's the LBT? It's the Large Binocular Telescope. This is a collaboration between astronomical institutes in Germany, Italy, and the United States. 
And when Italy is involved, you need to always know that the Vatican is involved somehow. So the telescope is located on Mount Graham near Tucson, Arizona, at an altitude of about 3,200 meters. So it says this, this telescope consists of two 8 by 4 meter mirrors on a common mount. This telescope is equivalent in light gathering power to a single 11.8 meter instrument. So I'm going to let you listen to this next video and find out more about this um, telescope. Okay, I promised you we would find out uh, the, 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 this great Catholic astronomer, the number one, is operating with something called Project Lucifer. What is that? Well, up on top of Mount Graham in Arizona, there's, a, there's an observatory complex that consists of three very high-powered telescopes. One is the Vatican Advanced Technology Telescope. There's a, there's a radio telescope, and then there's one called the Large Binocular Telescope. This is the most powerful telescope in the world. In fact, they told us they can get better images of space than the Hubble Space Telescope can. Hmm. Now, attached to this telescope is an infrared camera named Lucifer which is really a, a kind of a, a, an odd name um, <laughs> so. for a camera. And, you know, from the information that we gathered, this thing was named by the Max Planck Institute and some German astronomers. But the Vatican is part of this conglomerate up there, that, that, and they're all working together. Now, what this instrument's used for is astrobiology, for looking for exoplanets, looking for other worlds. And uh, the infrared spectrum is also very useful for seeing things that can't be seen with the naked eye. And many UFO researchers have noted that you can see a lot of ships and entities that you normally can't see. So the question is, what are they looking for? And we know that these life forms that they are engaging with are demons. They're demon spirits. Let's listen to this. It says the LBT observing instruments split into single beam instruments receiving light from one primary mirror only and instruments combining the beams of the two mirrors while conserving their phase relations. Each of the two telescopes is equipped with three single beam instruments, a prime focus camera, an optical spectrograph, and a near infrared instrument Lucy, formerly Lucifer. So what exactly are they looking for? Chime in on that. Let me know your thoughts. They named it Lucifer because it was finished around, um, they finished it around Halloween and Martin Luther was in that, you know, had grown up in that area of Germany and all these reasons and so and also the acronym the acronym spelled out a whole bunch of interesting and so so anyway words. that's why they came up with it uh, but then of course it became this big issue that oh Lucifer's up there at the vat and there's all this kind of stuff and so they changed it to Lucy because it was just too much and that was fairly recent confusion. that they changed the name I think yeah yeah it was Luc called Lucifer when I first started here of course it hasn't been up here very long so um, that was like purgatory scary. Yeah. yeah. So after they had an uproar about the name, they changed it to Lucy, L-U-C-I. So this article from the National Catholic Reporter says, Men in Black, Belief in Aliens, Not So Far Out for Some Catholics. <laughs> but time and again across the centuries, we have seen that religions adapt to scientific discoveries. The same will be true if someday we discover we're not alone in the universe, he said. Catholic theologians and priests have been among the most engaged in such discussions about whether extraterrestrials, extraterrestrials are likely to exist. And if they do, what are they like? <laughs> Yeah, let's keep going. 
So all of this has to do with Esau trying to maintain control. And now he wants to control mankind through artificial intelligence. But here's what the Most High says about his actions from uh, Jeremiah 12, 11. They have made it a, des a desolation, desolate before me. It mourns. All the land is laid waste, but no man takes it to heart. So their actions are destroying the planet. Again, this comes from Jeremiah 12, 4. How long will the land mourn and the grass of every field be withered because of the evil of its residents? The animals and birds have been swept away, for the people have said, he cannot see what our end will be. Now, you know, that is just arrogance right there. But they don't consider the end result of their actions. This caption says it all. Humans aren't inherently destroying the planet. Capitalism is greed because the love of money is the root of all evil. This is Esau's trademark. He didn't value his birthright. He didn't even consider uh, the promise that had been passed down from his forefathers. Esau does not think about tomorrow or how his actions affect others. Esau thinks about Esau. He wants it now, and he doesn't consider the consequences. So we need to ask, did Esau deserve the blessing and the birthright? Again, let me hear your thoughts on that. Because I'm thinking Esau, Edom, is not fit to rule a kingdom. This article from Resilience says capitalism is destroying safe operating space for humanity, warned scientists. They are destroying the planet and the world. They have little regard for other nations. Who's doing this? Those same nations that I mentioned to you in the beginning. They are the ones responsible for this. The article goes on to say that the 10 richest 10% 10 of people are responsible for up to 43% of destructive global environmental impacts. In contrast, the poorest 10% in the world are responsible just around 5% of those environmental impacts. I'm going to drop down. It says it confirms that global structural in inequalities from the distribution of wealth are intimately related to an escalating environmental crisis threatening the very existence of human society. Again, Esau's greed. So what's the solution? The solution is for the children of the Most High to first repent because we have to acknowledge our wrong and why we ended up in this position to repent and then step into our rightful place. The only way to do that is to then connect with the Holy Spirit because the sons of the Most High will be led by His Spirit and not by the flesh. All these things that you see happening are due to fleshly lusts. Let's read this in Romans 8, 19 through 21. For the earnest expectation of the creation eagerly waits for the revealing of the sons of God. For the creation was subjected to futility, not willingly, because, but because of him who subjected it in hope. Because the creation itself also will be delivered from the bondage of corruption into the glorious liberty of the children of God. So think about who has been ruling over these past centuries. And then look at the condition of the world. Is it better as a result of them being in, in power? Or is it all about selfishness and greed? Total destruction. That is Satan's M.O. 
He does not know how to create. He only knows how to destroy. The Bible says he comes to kill, steal, and destroy. But when you're not a creator, when you haven't created something, when it's not born of you, then what else can you do but try to destroy it? This is his goal, to destroy what the Most High has done. He wants the world recreated in his image. That's what this AI, this, these hybrid beings will be about. He wants a people who will follow after his dictates and always it will lead to destruction, always. But we know that the father is a giver of life and he wants us to have life and have it more abundantly. I hope this message has been a blessing to you. Shalom, everyone.